Well, uh, one of the rules in the uh, garage here is to use what you've got. <laughs> it's free. So free is always the best. One of the ideas I had for this microphone work was eliminating um, ground noise and stuff, at least in the initial builds. And I found that battery powered eliminated all of the ground loops and everything and a pickup of wires and stuff. So I thought I would go ahead and make a kind of a prototype area to try different things out, but have them all battery powered. And um, I've got the bunch of these batteries. Um, I had a quadcopter. I still have a quadcopter. I just don't fly it anymore. Um, and uh, these are 2.2 amp uh, amp hour batteries and they're quite nice and I have a charger for them and I have a bunch of these. I think I have four of them. And so, yeah, so they're all ready to go. I've got uh, a power source and this is a, a, a nice big heavy duty battery so it'll last a long time. And um, so I thought that I would create a test board and power it with um, the battery. So this is, a, I think this is called a T connector. Um, or there's another name for these things. Jo Jones can, I don't remember now. Anyway, uh, these go together and I'm already, uh, already started construction on this obviously, but I needed a couple things. I needed power. So I have uh, basically 12 volts coming in 11.1 as what the battery is rated at. Um, so that comes in. Uh, I would like to have uh, plus and minus 12 uh, for op amp things. And the microphones that I'm going to be playing with need phantom power, which is a 48 plus 48 volts. So I need all those on here. And this little guy, this is the amplifier that we looked at before. This requires five volts. So I'll probably have a five volt regular regulator on here as well. So what I've done is I've brought in the power and there's three rails here in the, in the, on the board. And on the uh, ground is the, uh, uh, ground leg of the battery. On the plus 12 is the raw battery. I've put a, uh, a poly fuse coming in. So if the, anything shorts out here, this thing fires at, I think half an amp. I might uh, lower that. I'm going to measure the current on this thing. Maybe it can go down to a hundred milliamps right now. It's at, it's at half an amp, not just so I don't start a fire. I don't want to short out lithium batteries and start fires. Um, and I also need uh, plus and minus 12, I said. So I'm using this DC to DC converter. Now I've got this big giant one here. And the reason is, again, if it's in the garage, it's free. And I've got about four of these things. I think I, I think I pulled these out of a piece of a working equipment. Um, I think they were on a socket actually. Uh, anyway, these things are expensive new. I think these are like $50 if you go to buy one of these things. But it's a DC to DC converter. Um, a lot like these Chinese ones, but you know, much higher grade. This one's Astrodyne. Uh, and uh, this is a 15 watt uh, power supply. So it outputs 1.3 amps. Uh, quite amazing. So uh, I forget what the input range is, but the output is 15 volts. And so I'm going to put in 12 volts on the input. I'm going to get 15 volts on the output. And I'm going to, so these, this ground and this ground do not tie inside this thing. They're isolated. So I can actually tie the ground to the plus side and I'll get negative 15 out on the other side. Um, so that's how I have it wired here. I have minus plus 12 now at plus 12 and minus 15. So I'm going to run my op amps off of plus 12 minus 15. And uh, they don't need to be symmetric. They just need to have some headroom. And then uh, this DC to DC converter uh, is an, a boost converter. And it will take us up to 48 volts. So uh, 12 volts in, 48 volts out. And uh, so that's how we'll get the phantom power. Uh, I'll have some type of way of outputting the signal here. This is a three and a half millimeter jack. Some way of inputting. Uh, so this is three and a half millimeter, but with phantom power, 48 volt phantom power. So let's uh, let's turn this thing on. I'm going to uh, I'm going to plug it. I'm going to plug it in and my LED comes on. That tells me that I've got phantom power. Uh, and we can bring over a voltmeter. And yeah, let's see here. Let me tilt this up so you guys can see it. Ooh, that's not good. 
tilt it somewhere else. Yeah, maybe it's better over here. Won't get the uh, won't get reflections on it. Yeah, I think you guys can see that. So we can measure the board here. Uh, we'll measure this rail, and we're getting minus 14.8. Measure this rail. We're getting 12.4 uh, off the battery, it's fully charged. And right here we're getting 47.8, uh, 47.5. Uh, that's as high as that regulator will go without me tweaking it. I could probably go on and change the resistor value, but 47.6 is going to be just fine. Um, so I've got all the voltages that I need. And I've got a nice, uh, nice test setup now. I'm going to add an instrumentation amp for the balanced input. Uh, I really should have an XLR connector on here eventually, um, but there's a balanced input coming in, and I need to put that into a uh, 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 differential uh, instrumentation amplifier to take out any common mode noise. And I'm going to I'm going to put that in here. I think I'm going to think I'm going to go ahead and use this board that I talked about. Um, I'll put in a gain of 100 uh, instrumentation amplifier built. And uh, I think I'm going to buy some fancy ones, too. Uh, I've looked around online, and um, there's some that you can buy off the shelf, about $5, that are supposed to be super good. So I'm going to do that as well. Anyway, I think, uh, I think this will be good, and uh, will be a good playground. Um, you might have noticed I have a different uh, proto board here. I just had these built. Uh, I, I have a bunch of digital proto boards that are just kind of like, this stuff down here, just, you know, 100 mil centers. But I found that when I'm doing analog circuitry, sometimes a strange pattern is better. And so uh, I kind of came up with this pattern. Uh, and uh, let me, uh, there we go. So uh, it allows you longer and shorter things and different spacing, like the holes here, or like spacing of a transistor. Uh, and anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's different. And then I've got three buses in the center here, um, plus V, ground, and, and minus V. And then an area down here, uh, I've got some areas for TO92s and some surface mount pads. Uh, more surface mount pads. A blank area, a friend of mine said, yeah, put a blank area down that you can do dead bug stuff on little things, and it has a tie to ground. Um, and um, yeah, so this is my uh, first project using this new board.